Greetings, Stoic King. Today we will delve deeply into the trenches of human connection. Our goal is to face one of life's most difficult realities, not to sugarcoat or skirt the truth. Head-on partnerships, the ties that can either bind us to Tartarus's depths or raise us to the summit of Olympus, but here's the million-dollar question. How can you determine when to break such chains? When is it appropriate to look at a relationship, whether it be with a friend, lover, or even family, and say, enough? Being wise is more important than being aloof or harsh. Today we're going to explore 11 signs that it might be time to end a relationship. We're not pulling these signs out of thin air. Instead, we're tapping into the timeless wisdom of Stoicism, a philosophy that has guided great men and women for over 2,000 years. I know what some of you might be thinking. It's about having the courage to face the truth, no matter how uncomfortable it might be. It's about understanding that sometimes the most loving thing you can do for yourself and for others is to let go. Stoicism isn't just about being frigid and repressing your feelings. Nothing could be further from the truth. Stoicism is about leading a moral life and overcoming obstacles with bravery and insight. This will not be an easy ride, so buckle up. It's about making difficult decisions from a place of clear-headed rationality rather than from a place of wrath or fear. We're going to expose some uncomfortable truths and challenge some deeply held beliefs. But if you stay with me and participate in what we're going to talk about, I guarantee that you'll leave with a better understanding of yourself and your relationships. Are you ready to take charge of your life and make decisions that are consistent with your highest values? Are you willing to build relationships that work for you and let go of those that don't? Let's explore these 11 indicators that indicate when a relationship should terminate. All right, let's set the scene before delving into the 11 indicators. Why do we seek advice from Stoic wisdom regarding our relationships? It's easy. The Stoics recognized a fundamental aspect of human nature that holds true even now, 2,000 years later. Humans are emotional beings who feel intensely, love fiercely, and occasionally hold on to things and people longer than is appropriate. But here's the kicker. The Stoics also understood that we have the ability to control our emotions and make decisions that are truly best for ourselves and those around us. That, my friends, is where the real power lies now. I'm not saying this is easy. It might be one of the hardest things you'll ever do ending a relationship, whether it's with a friend, a lover, or even a family member. It's like cutting off a piece of yourself. It hurts. It's messy. But sometimes it's necessary. Think about it like this. You're the captain of your own ship. Every relationship in your life is like a passenger on that ship. Some of these passengers help you navigate and they make the journey better, but others, they're dead weight, they're dragging you down, maybe even steering you off course, and that's what we're here to figure out. Today, we're going to learn how to spot those passengers who might be jeopardizing our journey. We're going to learn when it's time to thank them for their company and help them find their way to shore. But remember this, and it's crucial. We're not here to make rash decisions, we're not here to throw people overboard at the first sign of trouble. No, we are here to learn how to assess our relationships with clarity, wisdom, and yes, compassion both for others. And we're going to learn how to look at our relationships objectively, recognize patterns that might be holding us back, and make difficult decisions with courage and integrity. Are you ready to take an honest look at the relationships in your life? Are you ready to face some uncomfortable truths? The Stoics believed in living with virtue and making decisions that were in line with our highest values. Beneficial since that's where we start to experience true growth and begin to create a life that is meaningfully connected to others and lived according to our own terms. First indication. Stunted personal development. Pay attention, as this is really important. On life's journey, you are the main character and the champion of your own tale. What makes all of this amazing? Here's where it gets tricky. Heroes don't just develop. They change and become greater versions of themselves with every challenge they encounter. A healthy partnership. A good relationship should challenge you and serve as a source of intense personal growth. Encourage and propel you to new heights. But what happens when a connection starts to seem like an anchor rather than a source of fuel? Marcus Aelius, one of the great Stoic philosophers, once said, You have power over your mind, not outside events. 
But let me tell you something when you're in a relationship that's holding you. Back it can feel like you're losing that power. It's like you're stuck in quicksand unable to move forward. So how do you know if a relationship is stunting your growth? Here are some signs to watch out for. First, do you find yourself constantly compromising? Your ambitions are you putting your dreams on hold because they don't align with your partner's vision or make your friend uncomfortable second? Do you feel like you're walking on eggshells afraid to express new ideas or explore new interests because of how the other person might react and third? And this is a big one. Do you feel like you're the same person you were a year ago? Two years ago, five years ago in a healthy relationship, you should be able to look back and see how much you've grown and how much you've learned. I'm not saying every relationship needs to be a non-stop personal development seminar, but it should provide the space and support for you to grow. If you feel stagnant like you're shrinking to fit someone else's expectations, that's a red flag. You can't ignore. Remember the Stoics believed in constantly striving to be better and live more virtuously. Epicus advised starting by asking yourself, Is this relationship helping me become the best version of myself? Or is it keeping me small? Is it challenging me to grow? Or is it forcing me to shrink? Relationships can prevent you from becoming the person you would like to be. So ask yourself this before acting on your obligations. If the answer is the latter, you may need to make a difficult choice because, in some cases, letting go of what's preventing you from moving forward will actually help you grow. Now notice that we're not talking about the occasional fight or moment of frustration. Those are natural parts of any relationship, but rather a persistent, biting feeling of negativity that follows you around like a shadow. Imagine waking up every morning feeling heavy on your chest. Imagine dreading interactions with someone who should be close to you. If you feel like your energy is depleting whenever you're around this person. That's what we're talking about here. Marcus Aurelius, the renowned Stoic philosopher, once stated that if you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not caused by the thing itself, but by you. These are powerful words, but let's be honest. When you're caught in a negative emotional cycle, it can feel impossible to stop it. So how can you tell if you're dealing with persistent negative emotions in a relationship? First, if you find yourself feeling anxious or dreading seeing your partner, that's your gut telling you something. Second, if you find yourself constantly treading carefully, fearful of starting an argument or having a negative reaction, that's not a relationship. Third, do you feel exhausted, depressed, or irritated after spending time with them? If not, your emotions are like a compass. Pay attention to where they are going with this. The Stoics were not advocating for the repression of emotions, but rather for knowing them and refusing to allow them to rule us. Epicus once said, It's not what happens to you, it's how you react to it that matters. However, when negative emotions start to become the norm in a relationship, it's time to recognize a toxic pattern, because life is too short to live in a state of constant negativity. You deserve a better you. Ask yourself, does this relationship bring more joy or anguish into my life? Do I feel better or worse about myself when I'm with this person? Relationships that invigorate you rather than deplete you are what you deserve. If the odds are skewed more toward the bad, it might be time to reconsider. Remember that terminating a relationship doesn't always indicate failure. Instead, it can indicate that you are strong enough to create room in your life for better things or that you are courageous enough to prioritize your well-being. Relationship sign number three. Guys, manipulation and control. This is where things become serious because the poison we're talking about has the potential to erode your independence and seep into the fundamental foundation of a relationship. We're talking about manipulation and control when we talk about your sense of self and your self-esteem. Epicurus, the great Stoic philosopher, once stated, Nobody is free if they are not in control of themselves, but what happens when someone else tries to control you? Make no mistake, although subtle manipulation and control frequently pass for affection or caring about what's best for you. In a relationship, Manipulation and control can be like a comfortable cage that hides its confines until you try to escape. Here are some warning signs to look out for. Does the other person make you feel guilty for having thoughts, feelings, or desires? If so, that person is manipulating you and controlling you emotionally. 
Secondly, do they attempt to cut you off from your friends, family, or other networks of support? Third, do they use your fears against you? Do they make you feel like you're not smart enough or deserving enough to make your own decisions? If so, that's not support, that's sabotage. The Stoics believed in personal autonomy and the ability of each person to shape their own life. Marcus Aurelius said that you have control over your thoughts, not external circumstances. Realize this, and you will find strength, but when you're caught in a web of manipulation and control, it can feel like you've lost that power, like your strength has been sapped away, replaced by doubt and fear. Listen to me. You are the author of your own life story. No one else gets to write your chapters for you. If someone is trying to control the narrative to manipulate your plot, it's time to take back the pen. This isn't about blame, it's about reclaiming your power autonomy and right to be the hero of your journey. So ask yourself, do I feel free to be myself in this relationship? Do I feel supported in my choices or controlled in my actions? If you're feeling caged, remember that you hold the key to your freedom, recognizing manipulation, and control is the first step to breaking free from it. It takes courage to face this truth, but you have that courage within you. You wouldn't be here seeking growth and wisdom if you didn't sign number four, constant stress and anxiety. Now let's talk about something that can silently erode the foundations of even the strongest individual. Ewell's constant stress and anxiety in a relationship. I'm not talking about the butterflies you feel before a big date or the tension of navigating life's challenges together. I'm talking about a persistent gnawing feeling that turns your stomach into knots whenever you think about this person or this relationship unique. One of the great Stoic thinkers once said that we suffer more often in our imaginations than in reality. However, when a relationship is a constant source of stress and anxiety, that suffering turns into your reality. How can you tell if you're caught up in this toxic cycle? Here are some telltale signs. First, do you constantly feel anxious or afraid to say or do something wrong because it's not a relationship? Rather, it's a minefield. Second, do you feel dreadful? You're mobile. Third, do you lose your appetite or sleep? Your body is trying to tell you something. Pay attention to it. Concentrate as you're preoccupied with your connection all the time. Your mental health is raising red flags. The Stoics taught us the value of calm and finding inner peace. Epicus said he is a wise man who rejoices for the things he has, rather than laments the things he does not have. But how can you find that joy and peace when your relationship is a constant source of conflict? Here's the harsh reality. A healthy relationship should be a haven from life's storms rather than a place where you are constantly tested. Relationships aren't always simple. They involve work, compromise, and occasionally even difficulties. However, there's a big difference between dealing with life's obstacles as a couple and believing that the challenges are never-ending. Therefore, consider whether your relationship makes you feel stronger or more depleted. If the responses indicate ongoing stress and anxiety, it may be time to make a difficult choice. The Stoics advocated for accepting responsibility for our actions and living in the moment. While we may not be able to control how others behave, we do have total control over how we respond to them and what aspects of our lives we choose to accept. Your mental health, peace of mind, and capacity to face life head-on with courage and strength are not negotiable and should not be sacrificed on the altar of a toxic relationship. Take a deep breath. If you find yourself in a relationship that is causing you constant stress, anxiety, or exhaustion, it may be time to step back, reevaluate, and ask yourself if this is truly serving your highest good. Because here's the thing you deserve peace, relationships that uplift rather than deplete you, and the ability to wake up feeling strong, centered, and ready to take on the day rather than defeated before you've even begun. It takes courage to face this truth. It takes strength to make difficult decisions. But I know you have that strength and courage because if you didn't, you wouldn't be here seeking wisdom and growth. Your future self is waiting to see what you'll pick. So center yourself and ask yourself, is this connection helping me become the person I want to be? Or is it holding me back? Select sensibly.
Indication number five, lack of regard for one another. Pay close attention, because this is important. Mutual respect, the kind that benefits both parties and goes both ways, is the cornerstone of any successful relationship. The great Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius once said that the best form of retaliation is to change from the person who hurt you. However, in a relationship where there is a lack of respect, you may find yourself going to lengths you never would have imagined in order to be understood or acknowledged. Here are some telltale signs of a disrespectful relationship. Firstly, if someone consistently minimizes your thoughts or opinions, that's not a respectful dispute. Secondly, if they disregard your emotions or make fun of your weaknesses, that's disrespectful. The Stoics believed in living with virtue, and part of that virtue is treating others and ourselves with dignity. Epic has taught us that it's not what happens to you but how you react to it that matters. But when you're constantly reacting to disrespect, you're not living, you're just surviving. Here's the truth. You deserve respect. Not because of what you do, what you have, or who you know, but simply because you exist. Keep in mind that a person who truly respects you will honor your emotions even if they don't always understand them. Third, do they treat you differently in private than in public? You're a person, being deserving of respect and thoughtfulness. Asking yourself whether you feel respected in this relationship and whether you respect the other person in return is a good way to start. If the answer is no, it's time for a serious reevaluation. A relationship without respect is like a house without a foundation. It might look fine on the surface, but won't stand the test of time and weather the storms that life inevitably brings. You have the power to choose relationships that honor your dignity and recognize your worth. Don't settle for anything less. In the end, you accept the respect you teach others to give you. Keep in mind that demanding respect isn't selfish. It's just acknowledging your worth and expecting others to do the same. My friends, make wise decisions. You'll be grateful in the future. Sign number six. Living a lie. It's time to let go of illusions and face facts. The great Stoic philosopher Epicus once said, It's not things that upset us, but our judgments about things. But what happens when our judgments are clouded by illusion, when we're seeing what we want to see rather than what's really there? Here's the harsh truth. We're talking about living in illusion, a state in which we see our relationships not as they are, but as we wish they were. How can you tell if you're in an illusionary relationship? A relationship constructed on illusion is like a castle made of sand. It may seem strong from a distance, but it falls at the first hint of reality. Here are some warning indicators to look out for. Do you find yourself defending your partner's actions all the time, saying they meant well and will change? It's only a temporary situation. These thoughts may seem consoling, but they are frequently illusions in the desert of denial. Secondly, are you clinging to the past rather than accepting the present as it is? The past can be lovely, but it is a terrible place to live. Lastly, do you have an idealized picture of your partner that doesn't align with their behavior? Keep in mind that love isn't blind. Rather, it sees clearly and loves regardless. The Stoics were all about accepting things as they really are. Marcus Aurelius said that if you are upset about something outside of yourself, the cause of your distress is not the object itself, but rather your assessment of it, which you are free to change at any time. However, in order to change our assessment, we must first acknowledge the source of our misery. The truth is that accepting reality can be quite difficult at times, but it's also the first step toward real freedom and contentment. Living in delusion may seem safer in the short term, but in the long run, it's a prison that keeps you imprisoned in a relationship that only exists in your head, preventing you from finding something better or improving your current situation. Therefore, ask yourself, am I seeing this relationship as it truly is, or as I wish it to be? Am I facing reality, or am I hiding from it? Remember, true strength isn't about maintaining comforting delusions. Rather, it's about having the courage to face the truth no matter how uncomfortable it may be. If you didn't possess that courage, you wouldn't be seeking wisdom and growth. Select truth over comfort, reality over illusion, 
and remember that your true self is waiting for you when you sign number seven. Sacrificing essential principles. Okay, let's discuss something essential, your basic principles. Epicus, the Stoic philosopher, once observed, these aren't just fancy words you throw around, they're the compass that guides your life. Here's the thing. What happens when a relationship pressures you to be someone you're not? First, tell yourself what you would be, then do what needs to be done. It's not only unhealthy when a relationship demands you to violate your moral principles on a regular basis. It's heartbreaking, but how can you tell if you're sacrificing your morals? Watch out for these indications. First, are you doing things you said you would never do? We're not talking about trying new foods here. We're talking about crossing boundaries you've set for yourself. Secondly, are you ashamed of the things you do with this person? If so, your integrity is screaming out. Lastly, have you stopped standing up for your beliefs in order to maintain peace? Keep in mind that maintaining peace at the expense of your values is too costly. Marcus Aurelius reminded us that we control our thoughts, not external circumstances. Recognize this, and you will gain strength. Nevertheless, when you consistently compromise your morals, you forfeit that power. The truth is that your values are unchangeable. They shouldn't be given up for the sake of a relationship because they represent the core of who you are. A good partnership should encourage your finest qualities rather than your worst ones. Remaining loyal to your principles isn't selfish. It's vital. It's how you keep your integrity. Therefore, ask yourself, does this relationship coincide with my values or am I continuously compromising who I am? It should challenge you to grow, not shrink. Your happiness and self-respect in the end. You have the courage to stick to your convictions and you dare to be loyal to yourself. Don't allow anyone persuade you otherwise, no matter how significant they may seem. Choose authenticity. Decide on integrity and be unashamedly. The eighth sign is a lack of reciprocity. Okay, everything. Let's discuss equilibrium. Not the equilibrium of a Zen yoga stance, but the reciprocity that is essential to any wholesome interaction. This was recognized by the Stoics. Seneca remarked that wherever there is a human being, there is a chance for kindness. But what happens when that kindness just goes one way? How can you recognize this I am balance? A relationship without reciprocity is like attempting to clap with one hand. It just doesn't work. These are a few indicators. First, do you think that you're the one that initiates contact, makes plans, or maintains the keeping the relationship going? That's not a one-person band. Secondly, is your partner mysteriously absent during difficult times but you're expected to drop everything for them? Lastly, do you find yourself continuously coming up with an explanation for why you're giving so much more than you're receiving? They may be true, but they may also be indicators that your relationship is one-sided. Epicus taught us that a wise man rejoices in the things he has rather than laments the things he does not have. However, this is true only to the extent as it is difficult to exult when one is continuously giving without receiving. Reciprocity is about both parties actively promoting the development and enjoyment of the relationship, not about keeping score. Ask yourself, am I giving much more than I receive in this relationship? Do I feel valued and appreciated or taken for granted? Remember, you deserve a relationship where your efforts are matched, your love is returned, and your presence is valued just as much as theirs. You're not asking for too much, and you're not being selfish. A healthy relationship should feel balanced. It should be a dance where both partners take turns leading and following. You're merely anticipating the fundamentals of every healthy relationship. Sign number nine is abuse of any kind. Pay special attention to this one because it's non-negotiable. Abuse can be psychological, emotional, physical, or both. The Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius once stated that the best form of retaliation is to become like the person who caused the hurt, but that the best course of action in cases of abuse is to distance yourself completely. Let's be clear. Abuse has no excuse. Not a nun. Here are some warning signs to look out for. 
First, does your partner physically abuse you, even if they say it's not that bad or that it was only once? That's not love, that's assault. Second, do they constantly make you feel inadequate or mock you? Emotional abuse can leave scars deeper than physical wounds. Third, do they control your actions? As Epicurus taught us, no man is free who is not the master of himself. In an abusive relationship, your abuser is trying to be the master of you. Here's the unvarnished truth. It takes a lot of courage to leave an abusive relationship, but you already possess that strength. If you didn't prioritize your safety, you wouldn't be here seeking wisdom and growth. Reach out to trusted friends, family, or professional services for help. You don't have to face this alone. You deserve safety, respect, and love that doesn't hurt. So ask yourself, do I feel safe, respected, and valued in this relationship, or am I constantly walking on eggshells afraid of the next outburst or attack? You deserve to be treated with respect and decency. Don't let anyone persuade you otherwise. Instead, choose safety. You deserve nothing less, my friend, so choose self-respect and a life without hurtful love. Sign number 10. Poor communication all right. Let's discuss the essential component of each relationship. Communication. We have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we say, according to the Stoic philosopher Epicurus. But what happens when neither person is really listening? Arguments are only one aspect of poor communication. At its core, there is a fundamental lack of understanding and connection. Here are some warning indicators to look out for. Do your talks usually devolve into disagreements, even about insignificant matters? This isn't verbal discussion. Combat Secondly, do you find yourself misinterpreted or unable to comprehend your partner's perspective, as though you are speaking two different languages? Third, have you stopped talking about your feelings and thoughts because you feel that it would be worthless to be quiet, even though it's like a relationship graveyard? If something is not right, do not do it. If something is false, do not say it. However, truth and authenticity frequently suffer as a result of poor communication in relationships. This was counseled by Marcus Aurelius. The truth is that effective communication is more than just talking. It's about building mutual understanding and progressing as a couple. When communication breaks down, a relationship begins to deteriorate. A good partnership should be a secure environment for candid conversations. Ask yourself, can I express myself freely in this relationship? Can I feel heard and understood? Can we work through conflicts without them becoming disastrous? This should be the place where you feel most understood, not most misunderstood. Recall that effective communication is a skill that can be acquired and developed, but it takes work on the part of both parties. If you're the only one attempting, the conversation is a monologue rather than a dialogue. You deserve to be in a relationship where your opinions are valued, your voice is heard, and your feelings are acknowledged. Never accept less. Instead, choose clarity over ambiguity. Because a relationship is ultimately only as strong as its communication, Choose understanding over assumption, and connection over isolation. Sign number 11. Persistent disruption of inner peace. This is the last and most important indication, and it relates to your inner calm. Seneca claimed that the greatest blessings of humanity are within us and within our reach, but what if your relationship consistently pushes those blessings out of reach? Here's the deal. That sense of peace and satisfaction that the Stoics valued in such high regard. Let's examine some indicators that your inner peace is being threatened by a healthy connection. A healthy relationship should enhance your life, not take away from it. First, is your state of anxiety constant? As if you're always on guard for the next argument or problem to come up? This isn't a relationship. It's a state of perpetual anxiety. Secondly, do you find it difficult to unwind or be yourself with your partner? A relationship should be a safe haven, not a storm you're constantly bracing for. Lastly, has your level of happiness in life decreased since you're in a relationship? Love should uplift, not depress. Marcus Aurelius emphasized that you are in control of your thoughts, not external circumstances. When you acknowledge this, 
you will gain resilience. Yet, when a relationship abruptly disrupts your inner tranquility, it is actually robbing you of your power. Remember that choosing your inner peace isn't selfish. It's self-preservation. It's realizing that you can't pour from an empty cup. You deserve a relationship that respects your tranquility and adds to your joy rather than subtracting from it. Don't compromise on this. Choose calm over constant conflict. Your peace of mind is not a luxury. It's a necessity. A healthy relationship should complement your inner tranquility, not constantly challenge it. You should be a source of strength, not a drain on your emotional resources. The Stoic Path Ahead We've journeyed through 11 signs that it might be time to end a relationship, but remember that this isn't about making snap decisions. Instead, choose a love that peacefully coexists with your inner world because, in the end, your relationship with yourself is the most important one you'll ever have. It's about living a wise, self-respecting life that is consistent with your ideals. The Stoics taught us to face reality with courage. Epicurus advised us to first imagine who we would like to be, then do whatever it takes to get there. Consider who you want to be and what kind of relationships fit into that vision. Sometimes, ending a relationship is the bravest and most self-respecting decision you can make. It's choosing peace over chaos, growth over stagnation, and authenticity over illusion. Keep in mind that you are strong enough to make difficult choices. You have the ability to adapt to changing circumstances and the discernment to select relationships that will push you to grow while honoring your boundaries and morals. As the writer of your own life, choose relationships that will contribute more light than darkness to it. Write a story about bravery, self-respect, and an unrelenting dedication to your own development and happiness. Remain resilient, keep loyal to who you are, and aim for knowledge in all of your interactions. Although the Stoic route isn't always simple, it does lead to a genuine life of inner serenity and contentment call to action. All right, my fellow seekers of wisdom, we've covered a lot of territory today, but keep in mind that knowledge without deeds is akin to a ship without a sail. So, I want you to do the following. Take a time to consider the relationships in your life. Do any of these signs speak to you? Be honest with yourself. Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Your story might encourage someone else who is struggling. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. We are all on this growth journey together. But most importantly, remember that you have the power to shape your life and the relationships in it. Make wise use of that power. For those of you who are having to make difficult relationship decisions, know that you are stronger than you think. Until the next time, Stay strong and wise and continue cultivating that inner peace. This is the Stoic King signing off.